students welcome to edutab so welcome to this yet another lecture of claim lecture series for nabard grade a and afo 2019 examination so what is this claim lecture series all about so in this particular series we shall be covering concept lessons for agriculture through important mcqs now every monday and friday you shall get a video on certain micro topics the discussion will be on soil water today so let us just begin with this lecture now before we move forward let us just quickly have a look at the nabard grade a 2019 course that edutap offers so this is a full video course it is a comprehensive course for phase 1 and phase 2 so as part of phase 2 for each of the topics of esi and ard we provide videos notes mcq summary sheet now currently this particular course is running a discount of 15% you can use a coupon code early 15 Now the other courses offered by EduTap are RBI Grade B 2018 course, RBI Grade B 2019, CTET 2018, which has been launched in association with Grade Up. We also offer UPSC Indian Economy course. Now, friends, as usual, we shall be starting out with discussing one of the MCQs, and then we shall move on to the topic of discussion today, which is nothing but soil water, right? So, by having a look at the questions, we will get an idea as to what kind of questions we can expect and what are the areas that we need to cover when it comes to this particular topic, right? So, the first question is the lower limit of available water to the plants is called what? So, basically, when we talk about available water. we are talking about the water that is present in the soil right so there is a name which is given to that amount of water that can actually be used by the plant okay so we are talking about the lower limit here so in the coming section after we discuss soil water we shall answer this particular question The next question is which of the following water is not available to plants so there are different kinds of soil water we shall be discussing that as well so uh, one kind of water is actually not available to the plants we can say that the root of the plants are not able to utilize that particular water which is present in the soil so what is the name of that particular water so let us just move forward and have a discussion regarding the topic Okay friends so coming to soil water so we need to understand that when it comes to soil it has four major components okay one is the mineral particles the second is the organic matter the third is soil water and the fourth is soil air okay so in this particular session what we are doing is we are going to have a look at soil water so basically before that you need to understand that the soil water and soil air occupies the pore spaces that is the space that is available between the particles right now these spaces can be large or they can be small so the larger spaces are named as macro pores okay and those which are small are named as micro pores okay so these are the two things that you need to understand now what usually happens is both these uh, soil water and soil air compete to occupy the pore spaces so there is a general idea that whenever there is a greater amount of soil water you would find that the amount of soil air is less okay and vice versa so now coming back to the topic of discussion we need to understand what is soil water see whenever we refer to as soil water or soil moisture we are talking about the quantity of water that the plant can utilize so the word that is important here it's utilization okay so just keep in mind that whenever we are talking about the available soil moisture that particular quantity can be utilized by the plant for its growth okay now what happens is this available soil moisture is actually to the difference between the amount of water in the soil that is present at field capacity and the amount at the permanent wilting point so the difference between these two situations would arrive at the available soil moisture okay now what is this field capacity and what is this permanent wilting point so kindly have a look at the diagram which is given below so you can see that initially when we pour water into the soil and fill it such that all the pores are filled completely you can call it at the saturation level okay and that at that situation what happens is initially the water starts to drain okay and this draining of water is because of the gravitational force okay so we are terming it at water content at field capacity 
okay when all the available water starts to drain freely because of the existing gravitational force okay so what happens is after a point of time all the available water or, or uh, is uh, starts to get utilized by the plant so there is a level which arises you can see here in the second diagram where the water is available with the plant but the plant is not able to make use of this water effectively because this water is very minimum in quantity and the roots are not able to grasp this water and utilize for its growth okay now this point is known as the permanent wilting point so what happens is at this particular point the plant is deprived of one of the essential components that is soil water and it starts to wilt okay so at this point even if you start adding water the plant can actually not be a, uh, restored to its normal position so it is very dangerous when water uh, comes to this particular position so you can see the third diagram what happens is when you subtract the water content at field capacity and the water content at permanent wilting point the amount of water that is left behind is referred to as available water content so neither saturation nor minimum quantity both these levels cannot satisfy a perfect situation where plants can utilize water so the third situation or the third diagram here is the required water which the crops utilize right so this is all about soil water now here you can have a look at the picture which shows micropores as well as macropores so you can see that macropores have a huge area they are large okay and micropores are smaller okay and just keep this in mind we shall move forward and see the kinds of soil water okay see uh, what happens is uh, as we have discussed that the larger pore spaces are called macro pores and the smaller ones are called micro pores so initially when you are pouring water okay and the water is at saturation level okay that means no more water can be added to the soil so in this case what happens is all the macro pores and the micro pores are filled with water completely okay so this particular water that occupies the macro pores and the micro pores initially when no more water can be added to the soil is referred to as gravitational water right so this is important just keep this in mind the next situation what happens is once the uh, soil particles or the pore spaces are completely filled with water because of the gravitational force the water from the macro pores start to drain downward okay so there comes a situation of field capacity we were just discussing about this when the water starts to drain freely because of the gravitational force okay now in this case what happens the water from the macro pores has moved out okay but the water is existing in the micro pores okay because of the capillary action that is because of certain amount of surface tension the water is able to resist the gravitational force and stay back in the micro pores so this kind of water that we are talking about which is at the field capacity that water is referred to as capillary water right so you can see the difference now moving one step further what happens is the water which is present in the micro pores also starts to disappear and finally we see that there's a very thin layer of water that is stuck to the surface of the soil particles now this particular water that we are referring to cannot be utilized by the plant and thus we say that this water is present at the permanent wilting point we were just referring to this situation situation when the plant starts to wilt right now this particular water that we are referring to is known as hygroscopic water okay now this particular water cannot be utilized by the plants so you can see that initially we have gravitational water moving ahead we have capillary water which is present in the micro pores and then further moving ahead we have hygroscopic water which is actually attached as a thin surface to the uh, soil particles right 
Okay, so let us just quickly revise the three kinds of water that we have just seen. So one is gravitational water, right? So we have just seen that uh, it, this particular water moves freely in response to gravity and drains out of the soil. Okay, it does not stay for long, okay, in the macro pores. So uh, one more thing you need to understand that there's a certain kind of force which is actually holding this water for some time in the macro pores, okay? So that particular force is one third atmosphere or less. Okay, that is why it is very easily coming under the influence of gravity and then starting to drain out. Okay, so this you need to understand 1 by 3 atmosphere. Atmosphere is the unit of pressure, right? And uh, atmospheric pressure, so 1 by 3 atm or less. Next one, capillary water. So the force with which the particular uh, water is held in the micropores, it ranges between 31 atmosphere. Okay, and 1 by 3 atmosphere. Okay, so basically between 1 by 3 atmosphere and 31 atmosphere. Now, there's one more thing you need to understand. Why is this capillary water able to be there in the spaces or uh, rather micropores? Uh, because of two things. There is certain kind of a force that is acting between the water molecules. The first thing, okay. The second thing, there's a certain amount of force that is acting between the water molecules and the surface of the soil particles. Okay, so because of these two combinations, this particular kind of water still has the ability to keep itself intact and flow within the micropores. Okay. Next, the last one we were discussing about is hygroscopic water. Now, further, if you see this kind of water will obviously be uh, holding itself with more amount of force. You can see it is from 31 to at least 10,000 atmospheres. So it has greater amount of force because you need to hold on to the soil particles. So obviously you need to apply more force. Okay, if the force is less, it is very easy for that kind of water to come under the influence of gravity. But because this kind of water attaches itself to the surface of the soil particles very tightly, that means it means that it is holding itself with more amount of force to the surface particles. Okay. Uh, soil particles, I'm sorry. So what we can infer out here is because it is held very tightly as a film around the so soil particles, it becomes very tough for the, for the plants to utilize this kind of water. So basically, hygroscopic water is unavailable to plants in sufficient amounts. Okay, so from here you can infer that gravitational water to a certain extent plus capillary water is a kind of water that the plants can take. Okay, and uh, hygroscopic water is a water which is unavailable to the plants. Okay, so let us just quickly discuss the answers for the MCQs that we had presented before the discussion. So the first question is the lower limit of available water to the plants is called what? Okay, so this is called wilting point. We are talking about the lower limit. So we had just seen that once saturation is there, then you have field capacity, then there comes a point where the plant is not able to utilize the quantity of water that is present because it is very less. Plus, most of the water that is present is going to be stuck or going to be attached around the surface of the soil particles, making it very difficult for the roots to absorb them, right? So this particular lower limit is referred to as wilting point. And why do they, uh, we call it as wilting point? Because at this particular point, the plants start to wilt, obviously because it is not able to utilize that particular water, right? Next comes, which of the following water is not available to plants? Very easy. We have been very emphatically discussing this. So it is hygroscopic water. So gravitational water and capillary water can be utilized by the plants. And the uh, most amount of water that goes into a utilization is capillary. right? And then we have hygroscopic water, which cannot be utilized by the plants. So friends, with this, we have come to the end of this particular discussion of soil water. So I hope you have understood the topic very clearly and seen the relevance of it towards examination. So if you have any other query, you can drop us a, a mail at hello at the rate edutab.co.in. You can also give us a call at 814-620-7241. 
so friends the pdf of this particular uh, lecture or the discussion can be downloaded from edutabs telegram channel the link for the channel is placed on your screens plus you would find the link in the description box of this video as well till then friends thank you so much and happy learning and if you like the video kindly like subscribe and share